Today we're going to make a video about finding the threshold voltage in a MOS device from a DC simulation. So I'm going to go to my library manager and make a new cell view, which is going to be a schematic, and I'll just call it NMOS DC underscore test bench or underscore TB. This is of course in the ECE5321 library and it's a schematic view. With the window that pops up we're going to add a few components. The first component we're going to add is going to come from library CMRF7SF and it's going to be an NFET. And we can leave this a minimum size NFET but we probably want to make it a more realistic size so I'm just going to increase the uh, width per finger to one micron and make 10 fingers. So I have a total width of 10 microns, length is minimum 180 nanometers. And I'm going to place this transistor in the schematic. Note that it says that the substrate node is sub uh, exclamation point, uh, which means that it's a global node, and we'll have to add that in the schematic. Now we're going to add that substrate contact. Same library, this uh, cell name is called sub C. I'm going to make this contact a little bit bigger than the minimum. Trying to reduce the substrate uh, resistance. We'll tie this top of the substrate contact to the source. And we'll add a wire to the bottom of the substrate contact and tie that bottom node to our global node sub exclamation point. Now we need to add DC sources. So I'm going to add a global node from analog lib called VDD. I'll add two of these, and I'm going to add three grounds. One for the source of the transistor, and two for different voltage sources that we're going to use. Now I'm going to add two DC components. I'm going to give a DC value of VDS for one of these. That I'm going to tie to the VDD pin. And the other one I'm going to call VGS, VGate to source. And I'm going to tie this to the gate. Alright, going to launch analog design environment now that my schematic is complete. I'm going to go to one of my earlier schematics and only load the model setup. So I don't have to reload the models. And I can check to see that the models were loaded correctly. Here we see all the model files loaded correctly. Now I'm going to import variables from my cell view. I'm going to give VDS a value of 1.8 volts, the max value for this process, and I'm going to give VGS a value somewhere in the middle, about 1 volt. I'm going to choose analysis DC. I'm going to save the DC operating point. And I'm going to hit OK. All right, so we can now run this simulation. We can see that the simulation ran well. And I can find the threshold voltage in two ways. One way I can do it is go to results, annotate, DC operating points. Well, in this process, it doesn't give us the threshold voltage, uh, so we'll have to uh, go a different way. But you can see that when we annotate, it tells us what the drain to source current is, what the uh, voltages are on the transistor and what the transconductance and output uh, conductance of the device is. So to find the threshold voltage, I'm going to go to print DC operating point and I'm going to select the transistor. 
And here I get all kinds of detailed information about what's going on inside the model of the transistor, including device capacitances. So you could estimate drain capacitance, for instance, from this uh, uh, file. Uh, you can look at different currents that are flowing through the device, different uh, uh, charge properties of the device, the on resistance. But what we're interested in is the threshold voltage. And here we can see that the threshold voltage for this transistor is about 460 millivolts. So for your homework assignment, you can use a value of uh, somewhere uh, close to this 460 millivolts uh, or uh, 450, just know that you'll have uh, some error because this will change a bit with device size and substrate resistivity and things like that. So that's it for this video.